What up, Capricorn? <laughs> what up, Capricorn Legacies? Um, welcome back to the channel. For those that are new, welcome. For those that are returning, thank you, my loyal Capricorn Legions. Capricorn going. All right, I'm gonna light some Palo Santo quickly just to kind of cleanse this place. Invite spirit in. Let's get spirit on deck. Let's keep spirit on deck. We'll cleanse you. Boom. Let's get it. Cleanse my space. The cards. Your message. This energy field. And then we'll also light some third eye chakra inset. All right, now that that's taken care of, let's look into some channeled messages that I've been writing down for you. Okay, Capricorn, we have, consider happiness and sorrow as equal. So I might, I'll probably get into this more into your reading when the cards pop out, but pay attention to your health, okay? Act with humility. There'll be unexpected gains coming for you at the end of March, beginning of May. Your lucky numbers are six and eight, uh, which coincides with a card that sticks out to me for you is going to be the Eight of Swords, okay? So, I mean, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm wearing like a forest green, not so much a um, Kelly green or, you know, light green. But coincidentally, uh, I'm gonna continue with the the, the Wildwood Tarot and the Druid Plant Oracle. And both of them happen to be green. You know, and honestly, like, I kind of just, kinda, I kind of spaced out big time for today. Like, forgetting that it was St. Patty's Day. And I just ended up wearing this sweater all on my own. I was like, sheesh, I'm tapping in hard. Here, what does Capricorn need to know? Let's get a Druid Plant Oracle. What's Capricorn's remedy? A, we have Meadow Sweet. Meadow Sweet. Well, we got a face down here with the plant, the flowers. Look at, look at that color. See, that's St. Patty's right there for you. If you're I feel like everyone's busy today, or t yeah, today, tonight. For those of you that drink, probably at the bar or something. I feel like Americans, like, I mean, when I was younger, yeah, I was using, like, any and every holiday as an excuse to intoxicate myself. But <laughs> not anymore, yeah. So for those of you that may be intoxicating, make sure you're driving safe. Make sure you're not drinking and driving. Um, right. Okay, so this is about transition, blessing, and celebration. No coincidence, right? For those of you that may be celebrating, Meadow Sweet is a hardly per perennial found all over Europe, temperate Asia, and eastern North America. A member of the rose family, it loves damp meadows and river banks, ditches, marshes. Um, and wet woodland growing into a height of around one meter approximately three and one fourth foot feet its tiny cream five petaled flowers bloom from june to august filling the air with a sweet almond like scent the card shows bees gathering pollen from meadow sweet in full bloom we also see blow de well blow de wed flower face right here remember i said it at the beginning whose story is part of the fourth branch of the 
Mab Mabino Gion, the tale of Maf, son of Mathanwi, Mathanwi. She was made of oak broom and meadow sweet by the wizard Gu Gwydion as a wife for Leu La Giafis, but later turned into an owl. Interesting. A lot of you have an obsession with owls, like you may have an owl tattooed on you, I'm hearing spirits say, or just have like owls around your house if they're like little statuettes, little statues, um, paintings, like imagery, like earrings, owl earrings, like owl necklaces, Capricorn. Okay, so this card, may, like, main indication is that it's a time of celebration or that a time of celebration or transition is due, okay? Meadow sweets, creamy flowers, and summery smell are, rem are a reminder that change is one of the greatest features of being alive in this world, right? So change is inevitable, Capricorn, you know this. And that the best way to accept change is to celebrate it. Whether you are leaving a job relationship or familiar surroundings or joining forces with colleagues or a partner, this is the time to truly celebrate the change that is occurring. Offering flowers to the gods or the goddess and accepting the transformations this transition will bring. The card may also be urging you to formally mark and celebrate a transition or major event in your life or that of your family that you've been tempted to ignore, such as a loving, such as moving or leaving home, reaching puberty, succeeding in a creative project, achieving a significant age, separating or divorcing. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Transition and change for you, Capricorn. Say what? Okay, let's get into the Wildwood Tarot. Let's get into your message. Spirit, what does Capricorn need to know? Let's get the best and highest messages for my Capricorn legions. This is a new deck, so, oh shit, the Eight of Vessels, or the Eight of Cups, so I said the Eight of Swords, but we got the Eight of Vessels, and we have the Three of Arrows, mm -hmm. interesting, let's get a few more cards for you, oh wow, look at that. Hey, 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 we got the Queen of Bows. The Journey, the Wheel, and the Moon on Water. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this. Okay, so the next steps as far as with Three of Arrows, we're looking at jealousy of some sort. Okay, the three of arrows or yeah the three of arrows typically could mean like i mean the three of arrows in this deck is the three of swords right so consider this not so much about heartbreak or grief right but this is definitely of jealousy capricorn we got some jealousy going for you um, we also have the Eight of Vessels, which in this interpretation of the tarot, it is about rebirth, new changes, the inevitable change. I mean, I love the illustrations on these card on, on these cards. They're just so like colorful, mesmerizing. All right, let's take a look at the book. Let's look at the three of yeah. Well, I'm here to start from the start from the back. For whatever reason, we'll start from the back. I'm hearing spirits say. So with the journey, we have this crow like picking apart 
or like peeling apart like whatever membranes may be left of this skull. Many misinterpretations of this card have been made over the years in an attempt to avoid dealing with the essence and inevitability of death. On one level, death does not translate to a simple expression of change, but however profound, extreme, and cleansing that change may be, that reading simply does not deal with the core experience and meaning of this card. Much taboo and fear surrounds death, particularly in the West, mainly instilled by the Christian Church's use of concepts such as eternal damnation, judgment, and repentance. Faith Faint echoes of the celebration of a life successfully reaching the end of its journey are still found. However, in the concept of the wake, where people drink, where people drink, what? Okay, yeah, yeah this, is, this is why I started at the end. Where people drink and sing in joyous revelry at the passing of a friend or loved one. Once the dead were not feared, they were seen as guardians, holy ancestors and holders of wisdom. Burial chambers were built with loving precision to align with the rising sun and clans were buried together in sacred places that remained holy for thousands of years. Death was part of life, part of the cycle of nature. Like the sun itself, many plants and animals died in the winter, but were reborn, rebirthed with the aid of vessels in the spring. The sense of loss was tempered with the joy of release and the promise of regeneration. Death acts as a reminder to us of the transient nature of life. Every moment is a precious and, and every living thing is sacred. As a metaphor for cyclic change, the journey is a required experience on the passage around the wheel. We, why we have the wheel too, right before it. It may mean that the death of old ideas or concepts that have outlived their usefulness. It may be that it is time to strip to the bare bone the essentials of your nature so that fears and neuros neurosis can be faced and cleansed. There may be some laying to rest, right? Laying to rest what's no longer serving you, putting to rest the things that you're detaching from, that you're releasing. Um, let, me, let me think, let me think. Yeah, like letting go. New beginnings in a sense. But the journey is not to be feared. It is an inevitable and natural part of life to be celebrated and accepted. So for those of you that like may have been pulp, like putting things off Capricorn, it's time to face the inevitable, right? Change is inevitable. So you have it's time to face it, right? Put your big boy pants on, you know, Face it, you know, face your fears, face whatever limiting beliefs you used to have, detach from them. They no longer define you. They no longer will hold you back, right? Whenever there's a sense of change, I'm hearing spirits say it's also a time of purification and a time of realignment, right? So it's like you're like putting to rest the things that no longer work in your life because it's time to realign yourself in a new direction, on a new path, on a new journey. Most importantly, a new beginning, right? So as one door closes, another one opens. And this is exactly the case for you. So that's number 13. Now let's look at number 10, which is the wheel. Let's look at the wheel here. The wheel traditionally re represents the cycles of eternal law, okay? And evolution that all living creatures are governed by. Change is unavoidable. 
and necessary and necessary if the cycles of nature are to remain alive and regenerative. But on the human level, we are the weavers of our own destiny. Consciously or unconsciously, we make the patterns and possibilities that mark our path through fate. We wear our fate around us like a cloak, carrying with us all the potential and possibilities that the universe has to offer. And although the seemingly random, chaotic nature of the universe always has the final wor word, we can affect our own life and that of the world by taking control of our destiny. Many believe that fate is set, that all things are predestined, no matter what we do to this human reality. But the weaver of the cloak can affect this ever-shifting matrix of potential just by recognizing the pattern and making timely decisions. We can grasp the web of fate and weave in our own special personal pattern. Although the jigsaw puzzle of probability and possibility holds the universe together in a loose web of predictable events, nothing is set in stone, okay? The very act of asking a question creates a whole new set of possible outcomes. But be aware, with this ability to weave our own destiny comes responsibility, okay? So this ability of yeah. self-will, of free will, to live our own destiny comes responsibility, right? So you can't, like, place, like, your faults, your mistakes on someone else, right? We live in a life of free will. You're making your choices. Your choices will either have desired results or unfavor unfavored conclusions. Our actions are not without risk. If things are out of balance with the universe, the wheel will bring change in order to restore natural harmony to the web of fate, right? So I like to talk about it when, okay, so I mean, yeah, we do have free will. We have, you know, self-will per se. But most importantly, I think we should be living life off of our higher powers will, right? So if like, whenever like we make decisions out of self-will, right? that's when like things are almost forced, right? If we just live in that flow state and we let our higher power take the wheel, literally the wheel, then everything is so much more easier, right? Because you're not necessarily having to like hold that pressure or that responsibility on self, right? Because you're understanding that that responsibility can be lifted off your shoulders. In fact, it's encouraged by your higher power so that you can just take that next indicated step when and only when you trust the process. Let's look at the moon on the water, the moon on water, which is number 18. So, I mean, like I'm starting from the reverse, but for the most part, you have three major arcana cards on the bottom. We have one at the top paired with three minor, okay? So the moon on the water, in the image, of the moon on water, there is no visible pathway for the traveler. And yet its reflective light illuminates the whole landscape. We stand at the edge of the watery marsh, representing the primordial emotional state that holds all potential and creative energy within the human psyche. And are drawn to the horizon where moon meets earth beyond the barren trees. Beyond the flight of the sacred heron lies the fusion of our ancestral soul with the soul of the earth before us in the primal egg. Submerge in the am amniotic fluid of the world, waiting for the creative impulse that begins the process of life. The horns represent fertility as well as the horns of the waxing and waning moon. The shape of the horns in the head resemble the womb and fallopian tubes. In Mithraic and Dru Druidic tradition, the bull or ox also had a sacrificial role at midwinter. Representing the coming of new life from the death of winter, the heron is a sacred totem bird of fertility and is also known in Ireland as meaning an 
euphemism for promiscuous woman. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> Although in the form of a, of a stork, the bird takes over the mysterious of reincarnation. What? Offering powerful insights into the mystery of life itself. The moon on water signifies the first steps beyond earthly awareness across the primal, primal emotional void of creation. She also encompasses the dark moon aspects of fertility, sexuality, initiation, as well as the irrational fear of the creatures that are associated with the night, such as fair, fairies, fairies and demons and other hidden or unseen shapes of ancestral memory. Look at the illustration. All right, interesting, interesting. All right, I'm hearing spirit say, put that down. Okay, so I started from the back, right? So we're talking about the journey, right? The inevitable change. And when things aren't so-called perhaps going in our favor, it's primordial, primordial, primordial <laughs> to, to let our higher power take the wheel, right? It's just so much more easier. With the three of arrows, right? This is that jealousy, that loss that I was talking about experience like earlier, earlier. Earlier, I cannot speak right now. Like I don't, my throat chakra is like blocked or something. Um, but with the eight of vessels, we have rebirth, the hooded man, and the queen of bows. Okay, it may be a time for you to hair, literally, like you hair, right? Rebirth, right? Take away, detach yourself from, essentially the things that are difficult to manage in life. Let's see. I mean, you seem to be passionate, right? It's like the hair, like if you ever look at the, like the race between the turtle and the rabbit, right? The rabbit's confident, he's passionate, he's enthusiastic, right? He want like, he is like so-called like too confident, right? He takes a nap and he ends up losing the race. With the Eight of Vessels, right? Um, it's time for a challenge, right? It's time for like a time to challenge yourself, to maybe like face fear, give rebirth to self. Right? I mean, look at the stream, how it's flowing. Look at the vessels, how they're hanging from the tree. They're being, they're overfilled, right? It's almost like you're, like, have so much on your plate that you're facing this with, it, like, a sense of difficulty almost. Like, I mean, you know it's going to take hard work. Like, you're, you know this, right? I mean, your cup overfills and it fills the vessels on the bottom, right? This is a vesseled message, literally. Um, let's see, let's see. This is both emotional fulfillment from your hard work, right? The stream continues to flow because your hard work continues to flow, right? Your work ethic continues to flow into new and bigger ponds, right? You almost like you're within that pond, you resonate with that pond, you make your presence, and then when it's time for you to flow into another bigger body of water, you're ready to do it. Capricorn, you're like unstoppable, it's beautiful. With a hooded man, okay, this is the, um, what card is this? Is this the, 
What card is this? Like, hold up. The hundred man is a hermit. It has to be. I'm like trying to think right here. Yeah, it's definitely the hermit. <laughs> Look at him, how he's holding like this, like, uh, you know, it's like, it's traditional, right? He's holding that light. He's bearing that, that light. This is about your wisdom, your independence, right? Your, um, I guess some miracles in a sense, right? The miracle of awareness, the, the miracle of knowing that you're going to find that hidden door, right? You're going to find home. You're going to find your place back to where you want to start. Look at the wreath, how it's hanging, right? There's just a, like a beautiful sense of home with the wooden door. This is that awareness, that independence. It doesn't necessarily mean like you're incapable of being in a relationship, but you're doing perfectly well, Capricorn, if you're single by yourself. For those of you that are, are in a relationship, Spirit's asking you to find your independence within that relationship as well. Like find that balance, right? The jealousy that comes from this is because you have so major are so many major arcana cards that it's like this is the jealousy that's being stemmed from the beginning, right? It's not so much about heartbreak, disconnect, grief, or loss, but this is literally about jealousy. Um, which, so I'm going to end by reading this one because there is definitely something you need to hear I'm hearing. The origins of jealousy can be infinitely varied. Uniquely subjective and deeply rooted in socio-economic and psychological soil. But whether born of a broken heart, a broken dream, or a broken economic system, beware of surrendering humility and forgiveness to feelings of envy or jealousy, right? So do not surrender humility and forgiveness to feelings of envy or jealousy. No, 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 right? The most commonly associated, associated emotional drive linked to jealousy is loss, right? However, perceived by the individual, it behoves both the victim of jealousy and the subject suffering feelings of envy to look deeply into the nature of their own motives and responsibilities, right? So if you look at jealousy, I mean, like, like, okay, so I was talking about like, not necessarily about grief or loss, but if you really break down jealousy, it's the lack of, right? So like, say like, I'm jealous of someone for the things that maybe they have, let's say materialistically, right? Just as an example. I feel the loss of not having the things that they have. I feel the loss of feeling less than. I feel the loss of feeling unworthy, right? But it's about changing the narrative, changing the perspective, right? It's like, okay, cool, like you have that, but like I have spirituality, right? Cool, you have that, but I have it, you know, I have that same sweater in a different style, different color, different brand, right? Jealousy can literally kill you. Like, if you really think about it, and this is the jealousy that people have towards you, Capricorn. You're breaking hearts out there through jealousy. Whoa. However, perceived by the individual, it behoves both the victims of jealousy and the subject suffering feelings of envy to look deeply into the nature of their own motives and responsibilities. For the jealous or possessive, there is also sometimes a feeling of entitlement attached to the issue. This can be attributed to concepts of social or familial expectations, born or ill-conceived peer guidance, or the failure to enforce social responsibilities and parameters. As we mature, we discover that there will always be some who seem to have more or are gifted with copious good fortune. The heading bomb for envy is humility, acceptance, and forgiveness, even in the fate of bitter rivalry and anger. Just as the constant refocusing of your energy into a positive and creative momentum in your own life is the best healer, right? 
for the efforts of jealousy. Boom, right there. The healing balm for envy is humility, acceptance, and forgiveness, right? You can forgive yourself. You can accept yourself, right? You can come from a place of humility. I always talk about this, but it's so important to be humble. It just makes life so much more enjoyable, especially when you accept yourself, your, your faults, your character defects, you know, everything about you, right? The good and the bad. It all defines you. It, I mean, it doesn't all define you, but it all grooms you. It all tailors you to be this person that you're continuing to evolve to be. All right, so this message is a little complex. I feel like a little complicated, um, but I hope the message resonated. And if it did, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you wanna support me and this channel, Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to knock out that notification bell as well. And continue to wear like protective jewelry, you know, some beads, you know, some crystals around your energy, like some sage, some Palo Santo, some chakra incense, whatever that is that you feel comfortable doing. It's super important right now that we continue to cleanse our energy because we're coming into like a month and a time of change of transformation and we want to make sure that we're starting off in a pure state of mind body soul body and mind okay with that much love capricorn i love you guys dearly um until your next reading stay pure stay blessed